Last week, several news outlets ran a story about an AI vision shark detection program at California's Padaro Beach near Santa Barbara, which is an area where surfers and also great white sharks are both frequently found, sometimes together. Detecting sharks is easy if they bite you. The stories are interesting, but they lack detail about how this project was done exactly. So let's look under the hood today at the technology that was used to do that to really see how easy these types of projects are now becoming to do using AI vision. But first, the context. The system that was created is called Shark Eye. It was developed at the University of California, Santa Barbara, under the direction of Neil Nathan, who you can see here. What the program does is deploy drones equipped with high-resolution cameras, patrolling at about 200 feet above the ocean. The drones send back video footage that gets processed in real time to determine if sharks are present in the water. If so, it immediately sends a text message alert to about 80 people, including lifeguards, owners of surf shops, and parents of children taking surfing lessons on that beach. But how does it know when it sees a shark? Here's the GitHub page for the project. As you can see, there are more than 20 references on this page to Ultralytics. Clearly, that's what they used. Specifically, they used the latest model, YOLO version 8. But what's Ultralytics? That's a company that specializes in AI-based computer vision. And YOLO stands for You Only Look Once. It's an object detection and image classification model that was originally launched by Joseph Redman and Ali Farhadi at the University of Washington in 2015. Version 8 is the latest model. It supports object detection, object tracking, image classification or segmentation, and classifying body positions. There are also even newer versions of YOLO created in open source. What these models are most widely used for today is real-time object detection, as we saw in the Shark Eye project, including applications as diverse as autonomous vehicles, surveillance cameras, and quality control. Basically, Ultralytics created an abstraction layer that simplifies the deployment of computer vision models so that even developers with almost no experience in computer vision can quickly implement sophisticated projects. Consider Neil Nathan, for example. He's the scientist for the Shark project, and he obviously did a great job. His work was featured on the NVIDIA blog and on multiple news outlets. But he actually got his master's degree in environmental studies, not in computer science. But still, he could do it using YOLO. In fact, ease of use is one of the reasons why this model has more than a million users today. So, let's take a look at the code. First, before we start, we'll check our runtime. You can see that I'm running an A100 GPU and high RAM is selected. I'll need that. I already learned the hard way that Colab will crash if I try to do this on less than that. Of course, you could run this on your local machine instead, which is probably what they did at SharkEye. Next, we'll start by running pip install. Then we'll load the libraries. Now, let's display the image that we want to classify, so we'll have an idea of what we're actually trying to do here. You can see that there's a bus in the picture and some people in front of it. So, ideally, 
we'd like to be able to identify that thing as a boss and identify the people too. That's our goal, object identification and classification. Now, we'll quickly train the model using just 10 epochs, which is not very much training at all. By the way, the letter N that you see here in YOLO V8N indicates that we're using the nano version, which is the smallest one. That's the one you would use on a mobile device, or really anywhere that real-time performance is needed. There's also a small, medium, large, and extra-large version, each of which has its own advantages, trade-offs, and use cases. And you can see that this model is being trained on COCO 128. COCO stands for Common Objects in Context. The full database contains more than 20,000 images segmented into 80 different classes. COCO 128 contains a tiny subset of only 128 images in all. It's a very small data set that's used for things like debugging or for demos, like I'm doing now. So, V8 Nano is the pre-trained model, and COCO 128, in this case, is what I'm using to fine-tune that for demo purposes. In the case of the shark detection project, they used 15,000 images for fine-tuning, coming from five years' worth of drone surveys done at Padaro Beach. So, clearly, the main work of that project was not the AI aspect. It was assembling and tagging 15,000 images from untold hours of video footage. The actual pre-training for that project took only 20 hours to complete using NVIDIA T4 GPUs, which is well below the power that I'm running here. To give an idea, A100s are about three to five times more powerful than T4s. So maybe those 20 hours might have been more like five hours on my machine. Either way, a very high performance model got trained in less than a day once all the images were ready. And now our code has finished running, so let's display the image again and see how things worked out after training for only a couple of minutes on just 128 images. And voila! Boss and people detected, tagged, and located. Not too bad. So that's it. Basically, with six lines of Python code, I was able to load Ultralytics, import the libraries, load the model, and fine-tune it. And we know that the Shark Eye project achieved 92% precision using this same base model on its very difficult task of finding sharks underwater at various depths below the surface, mixed in with similar looking shapes like seals and dolphins and floating seaweed, and also obscured by choppy waves and sometimes by glare from the sun, and as recorded by a flying drone with a very small camera attached, and with a lens that's exposed to a salty and humid environment. That's not so easy. And by the way, when highly trained staff watch the same live video footage, they detect only about 60% of the sharks. So here's the takeaway. It's not very likely that you or I are going to be sending out drones anytime soon to look for sharks in the ocean, but maybe we'll be asked to look for defects on a production line or to look for safety hazards on a work site or 
to verify that the products from our brand are on the shelves where they're supposed to be in the store, or to check for the health of crops, or any one of ever so many health applications. For any and all of these situations, I'd say it's worth your time to stand up some code and benchmark your own performance. You might just discover that you're already state-of-the-art without any help from anyone else. Meanwhile, thanks for watching and see you next time.